actually, let's start uh, from the viewpoint of, did you even know that mercury was in your silver amount to begin with? Uh, well, there's a question of when I knew. Certainly while I was doing a PhD on mercury chemistry, I knew. Uh, I don't remember any point at which I didn't know this, but there was certainly most of my life in which I didn't think anything about it. Uh, I went through uh, graduate school, and uh, you know, I, graduate school is stressful and it wears you out, but I'd always find myself uh, going to the Chinese doctors. You know, the regular doctors, they don't have anything to tell you. You know, you're like, I'm really tired, my back kind of hurts, you know. And, uh, you go to the Chinese guys and they look at you and they say, ah, oh, well, you've got kidney deficiency and liver excess, you know, your kidneys are burned out and, and your liver's irritated. And I was like, okay, and then they give you all these herbs and then you feel a little better and then you sink back down. And then you feel a little better and you sink back down. Uh, and then during the course of my studies, it was suddenly patently clear to me how much uh, mercury would be going through my body. We didn't, in my laboratory, we didn't do any human testing. We were, we were worried about water and sediments and animals. We didn't care about ourselves. Uh, and and we, we were in an agriculture building. There was mercury all over the place. They used to use it for the chemistry. Uh, but suddenly, I, I, I just understood. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew it was bad. And uh, so I left school, and uh, I opened up my own company. And as I said, I... I had a guy take out my amalgams, and I said, I'll figure, figure this out. I started taking these chelators. I'm monitoring my urine. My urine levels are really low. I'm taking the chelators. They're coming up a little bit, but it's not a big deal. They're not really coming up. But if there's one thing that's clear, I felt awful. I mean, just God awful. And that lasted for some time. So, oh, well, maybe I'll take more, you know. I, uh, maybe I'll feel better then. And then I felt more awful and more awful. And... My staff, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they start making, well, they, they made fun of me the first time I took DMSA because my IQ fell about 80 points. And so I'm this PhD. I run this uh, company. I've got former students of mine. I, I intellectually terrorize them. And, and all of a sudden, I'm done, dumb as a brick. And, uh, and it was very clear that this all went on. And so I kept going through this kidney route, trying to get through. I thought, well, I'll just get through all this and I'll get better. And uh, then I started uh, watching talks at uh, the Colorado Functional Medicine Forum. Uh, and the one that really affected me was by an MD named Bob Roundtree. And he was talking about what's, what's really fairly well known is how much of your immune system is focused in the gut or located in the gut. And you've got anywhere between 60 and 80, depending upon the estimate, percent of your immune system in the gut. That's a phenomenal amount. And you've got these little things called dendritic cells that reach in to the contents of the gut and read it. They look for bacteria they don't like or, or organisms they don't like, and they look for poisons. They associate the two, and they sound the alarm. So I thought to myself, well, the gut is vast. It's vast. It's got so much surface area. It's got blood flowing all through it. It's got transporters for good in and bad out all through it, and it's where all these associations are being made. Maybe this is a real issue when we're swallowing our amal amalgam byproducts, when they're oxidizing, corroding, and coming off of, uh, off of our mouth through our gut. Maybe this is the area where we want to go treat, because obviously the kidney is not working for me. Uh, in retrospect, I, I, you know, now that I see all these numbers, I was a guy with the gates closed at the kidney, so I was not the guy to do that. So, I uh, had, had things that I used that would be perfect for going into the intestines, bonding up all of the metals there, acting as a big reservoir for, for metals and going out through the stool. And so I started, I cleaned these things up to a human grade and started using them. Sure enough, the chronic fatigue, the brain fog, uh, it, you know, the immune issues of just getting sick all the time, all this starts to evaporate. Soon, I'm not going to the Chinese guy anymore. Uh, my liver is working well. Uh, I no longer get sick coming back from uh, conferences. I no longer get sick when my two children get sick. The whole organism just starts to work again. Uh, and that was, I really only understood the half of it then, except that I chose the right route. As I looked more and more into it, I found out more and more about the glutathione system and how it works. It is aimed at dumping into the gut. And it's got 
these doors at the gut that have to be open for the glutathione metal conjugates to get out. Once the doors are shut, the whole system backs up and it shuts down. So until you open up those doors in the gut, specifically in the upper small intestine, until you open those doors, the glutathione system cannot function correctly to move toxins out of your body. And I say toxins here, I don't say mercury. Mercury is primarily going out through this glutathione system, but it's not the only thing. Aflatoxins from mold, uh, different chlorinated hydrocarbons, different uh, nitroamines. There's a whole family of different things that go out to the glutathione system through those doors. But it goes beyond that because your other detoxification pathways, glucuronic acid conjugation, sulfate conjugation, methylation, acetylation, taurine conjugation, they all go through the same door. Multiple pathways, one door, the door better be open. If you're swallowing mercury all day, it's inorganic mercury, it's a corrosion byproduct, you don't absorb it very well, but it's an excellent irritant. It's an excellent creator of inflammation and it controls the flora of bacteria in your gut. There is no better way to close the transport out than to create inflammation in the gut. Does the mercury uh, kill the flora or just? Well, it kills some of them and so it kind of controls what flora are gonna be there because they have to be mercury resistant. Uh, and so there's some work by a microbiologist that I've worked with before named Ann Summers where she looks at the flora of mercury in uh, the gut of monkeys and then she puts amalgams in and sure enough the flora changes and certain organisms that existed before cannot exist anymore and they have to switch over and you have a different, uh, a, a, a different community of organisms there. Uh, and so just the fact that it does control that community uh, can have negative implications.